Welcome back, I'm Curtis Smith. A lot of people have questions about fertilizing their trees and their landscape. We're visiting with George Duda with New Mexico State Forestry. And George, have you ever fertilized the trees in your home landscape? Yes, I have, but I don't do it now. Why is that? Well, here's an example of what can happen. This tree looks really healthy. This Beautiful is a, tree. A white fir. When it was very young, I thought I'd give it a, a little kick, and I put several of those fertilizer spikes near the trunk of the tree, and about three days later, there was not one needle on this tree. I remember seeing this tree back then. And what happened then, I ha realizing what happened, I dug the spikes out, and I flushed the ground quite a bit to get that out of there. And in the months, ensuing months, the needles came back. Yeah, but the scar is still here. The scar it? is still there. If we dig and look at the trunk. Dig and look at the trunk. And uh, there's the scar from that fertilizer burn. It, it looks like it's done some pretty serious damage to the trunk, but it's trying to heal. The tree is doing a pretty good job of coming back from that. Yes, it is. So the key is keep the fertilizer spikes well out beyond the drip line. Well out. Because the roots go a long ways out. Mm -hmm. But some trees, such as this, which are native here, uh, native at a higher elevation, really don't often need fertilizer, no, but don't. when we have some of the exotic trees we bring in from back east or mm -hmm. somewhere, we may have to fertilize them. We want to be very careful and not put those fertilizer spikes too close. Too close. They can burn that tree pretty bad. And we've got another tree that's showing some symptoms on the trunk, but it's a different problem. Let's take a look, Let's at, take that. A look at that. Okay. Well, here's a tree with some trunk damage, George. Sure is, yeah. Sure has some I damage on it. Show this to me. You've got a number of things showing here. See cracks in the bark, that's due to drought. Drought stress. But this is a real concern right here. Yes, I think if that were not addressed, this limb would probably fail and come down it's, probably this winter. It is going to fall out to sooner than later in this case. Mm -hmm. now, I've seen large trees doing mm -hmm. this. I saw one the other day in Santa Fe where this was happening and it's a major concern, especially when it's big. You know, here it's just gonna damage a tree. It's mm -hmm. not gonna fall and hurt a person. Mm -hmm. But in a case where there are a lot of people around, these have to really be taken care of. It would have been nice to take care of it earlier. Early pruning. Before this became a co-dominant trunk. That's right. It believes it's another trunk. That's right. But at this point, it needs to be taken care of before the tree's damaged. That's right. So I'll come in a little later uh, here and take care of that and make some careful cuts. And uh, we'll see if we can fix that. And I see you've tried a little experiment up here right. with uh, driving a, a large screw through a splitting branch. Just to see what would happen. It was going to fall anyway, so mm -hmm. I thought I'd try and see what happened. Yeah, you're going to have to remove it, so you didn't yeah. harm it. That's not something we'd recommend that people no. do in no. this case. That's right. And at least it'll hold for a little while. I'll give you some time. Mm -hmm. George, we looked at some tree trunk problems, especially mm -hmm. the splitting on that Idaho locust, but uh, here we see some leaf problems. What have you got going on here? It sure is a, a bad case of pear slugs. Pear slug, cherry slug is another cherry name slugs, for it. Mm -hmm. The larvae of a soft, fly. a soft fly. So it's really not a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the organic controls we'd use for caterpillar leaf eating uh, pest mm -hmm. won't work on this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can use a number of insecticides which will work. But one of the things I found that if you wear goggles when you apply it is sawdust. Uh, it's probably uh, wood ashes. Wood ashes. Wood ashes will cut the skin of that very soft insect mm -hmm. and they just lose their moisture and it kills them. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's an easy way, but it's kind of hard to treat a tree this large. Have you used any treatments on this? Uh, no treatments at all. So you see it didn't wipe out the tree. No. It's end of the season, so it hasn't hurt the tree that much. Mm -hmm. So treatment may not be necessary, but if it continues year after year, it's going to affect the health of the tree. Yeah. So treatment may be necessary mm -hmm. under those circumstances. Yeah. It's a beautiful tree, cherry tree. A delicious cherry tree. And you've got a plum over here, and it's also got the it's same all problem. Same, same problem right there. It, it just jumped from the cherry to the plum, apparently. Yeah, in a few weeks, the leaves will fall off. We're mm -hmm. taping this mm -hmm. in the late fall. Yes. And so they'll soon be gone. As long so. as the soft flies don't eat my plums. <laughs> They're not eating yeah, the plums. Right. We're doing that. Yeah, that's right. Well, George, these are interesting problems you've shown us, things to learn from. Thanks for sharing your experience with the fertilizer and what you're doing with your Idaho locust and showing us this. Appreciate you sharing all these things here in your garden. My pleasure. Come back again. <laughs>